Hi everyone, Jen Mueller here. It is April 22nd, 2022. The public hearing on the Fields Project was yesterday and the Roaring Fork Valley Planning Commission voted three to two to recommend the project and the upzoning to the highest density zoning classification of residential multifamily. Despite the signatures of 440 of you who objected to the project and the upzoning by signing the petition. It's not a done deal yet. Now it gets passed to the three Eagle County commissioners. It is ultimately their decision. They have three Roaring Fork Valley Planning Commission members who voted for the project and upzoning, by the way, are J.R. Spung, shown here. Also, Bob Andre and Philip Ring who is also the chair of the commission. Uh, I'll put all the links to these websites that I show in this video in the description for the video so you can find them um, yourself if you would like to. As many of you already know, the Roaring Fork Valley Regional Planning Commission uh, makes recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners regarding land use within the Roaring Fork Valley. Uh, this is a very important and powerful commission. The people who sit on this commission, listed here, are entrusted not only to hear evidence, but to ask questions in order to determine if what the developers are presenting is accurate and comprehensive, and whether or not the information they are giving is sufficient to make an informed decision. They are also responsible for critically evaluating and identifying any weaknesses in their own staff's recommendation. They must weigh the evidence objectively and make certain that the applicant can demonstrate compliance with all of the approval criteria. I've been replaying various snippets from yesterday's hearing and the past hearings on this project, and I'm having a really hard time reconciling things I've heard certain members of the Planning Commission say and their claims of objectivity. There are certain glaring problems with this application that certain commissioners seem to be glossing over and ignoring. No matter what facts are presented, they seem to only give weight and attention to statements that the developer presents. I decided to do some digging to find out who these people are who are making such important decisions on our behalf. J.R. Spung is one of these people. Here is JR's LinkedIn profile and his own description about what he does for a living. His specialties are design and management of infrastructure for land development projects. At the hearing yesterday, he actually stated that he had a conflict of interest. As it turns out, the company that he works for is involved in the Highway 82 Elgebel intersection solution that the developer is advocating and contributing money for. The company that he works for, JBA Consulting Engineers, is bidding on this job and hoping to be awarded the contract by the county. First of all, here's some helpful guidance offered by the U.S. Department of the Interior Departmental Ethics Office on when someone should recuse themselves. So, uh, basically, uh, recusing from a matter in a order to a avoid a conflict of interest or the appearance of a conflict of interest. So even the appearance, appearance uh, you should recuse yourself for. A recusal is appropriate when a conflict of interest exists between an employee's job duties and financial interests, including interests in future employment or certain business or personal relationships or outside activities. So you think that would be a clear reason for immediate recusal and bringing in one of the other two commissioners. After all, that's why they have alternatives. But no, the hearing was allowed to proceed with him on the panel because he simply said, I can be impartial. As a reminder, he ended up voting for the project. The other commissioner who seemed to turn, a blind, to turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to any evidence that contradicted what the developer said was the chair, Philip Ring. Here's Ring's LinkedIn profile. As you can see, he is an owner's rep uh, in construction and development. 
He works for Ring Development Services, which is his own company. And uh, here is his About section. Uh, once again, his specialty is owner's representation. So an owner's rep, by the way, is hired by a project owner to represent him or her throughout the entire process of a development. Um, the owner's representative serves as a liaison and ensures that the owner's best interests are carried out. Once again, the owner is the developer of the project. Not the developer of this project per se, but uh, in his case, he works with developers. Uh, this is from Ring's own website, uh, Ring Development Services. He says, Philip generally works directly for clients, looking out for their interests in a complex project. Why have an owner's rep? Once again, this is from his business website. The bottom line is that a good owner's rep ensures the project is ultimately successful. And again, from his website, uh, this is uh, for the owners. It says the owner's rep is your advocate in all matters pertaining to the project. No one else is there solely to represent and protect your interests. An owner's rep can wear many hats throughout the process, but they are first and foremost working on your behalf. Whether sitting beside you interviewing architects and contractors or representing you in a weekly construction coordination meeting, an owner's rep always puts your best interests first. So after seeing all of this, it makes a lot of sense to me why Philip Ring seems to dismiss public comments and gloss over anything negative about the field's development. His livelihood depends on developers in the Roaring Fork Valley. How much work do you think he would get if he objected to development projects in this valley? After looking at these websites, I decided to check out Twitter to see if any of the commissioners were active on that social media site. Twitter is the social platform where people go to establish themselves as thought leaders in their fields. It's a platform for them to share their views with the public and demonstrate their expertise on their specific subject matter. Here's what I found on Philip Ring's Twitter account this morning. So uh, here he is, and you can see um, that he uh, or portrays himself as a biker, skier, construction and development consultant, master of the universe in training. And here's his website. So we know this is him. He joined in November of 2010. He has 557 people following him. Uh, so on Twitter, basically, um, you can tweet or retweet things. And here we see that he has retweeted this tweet by Siggy Rose. And generally in retweeting something, you are uh, advocating for it. You are saying that you find it interesting and valuable to put on your own Twitter account. Uh, and here's something that he tweeted or retweeted, I should say, from Jeff Tydrick on April 20th. So two days ago, I can't seem to get this highlight, but you get the general idea. Uh, and once again, I don't know if I wanna read this out loud because you can see on here, it's a little questionable, um, but I'll give you a chance to read that right here. Uh, so he called um, Republicans some pretty nasty names there. And that was two days ago. And then three days ago on April 19th, he actually tweeted this. So these are his own words, something that he typed out specifically on his Twitter account that he thought was important to share with his followers and the general public, because this is a public platform. Uh, once again, I don't, you know, you can read that. I'm not going to read that out loud, but uh, that's what he had to say. And uh, that was in response, I guess, to this video. I did not watch the video. I'm not sure um, why that. 
uh, elicited such a severe reaction from him, but there you go. So is this who Eagle County wants sitting on the Roaring Fork Valley Regional Planning Commission, let alone as its chair? I know I'm not comfortable having him make decisions for this valley. His conflict of interest and obvious lack of good judgment as evidenced by his public Twitter profile should disqualify him and be grounds for an immediate removal from the planning commission. Ultimately, it's still up to these three Eagle County commissioners. Um, they have the ultimate say in this project, the Fields Project, whether or not it gets approved. Uh, that would be Matt Schur, Kathy Chandler Henry, and Jeannie McQueenie. Uh, they each have their own individuals, individual emails here. You can email them and let them know your thoughts about the Fields Project and about this planning commission that they have appointed, the members. And also here's another email, I guess, where you can uh, contact all three of them at once. So um, that's what I have to say. And uh, still no date on when the Eagle County commissioners will consider the Fields Project, but I will pass that along as soon as I have something for you.